Hi, brothers and sisters in Yeshua, and this is part one of The Bride in the Secret Place. Um, go back and listen to part two first, if you like. <laughs> I have no idea why the Lord wanted me to do them in the opposite order. I think because he wanted you guys to see some of the beauty in his Hebrew language in the second part first. But um, this is really for us to check in with ourselves. And if you are new to all of the concept of the bride in the secret place, this is definitely for you or you can send to your friends. And it's talking about all the things in the modern church that get in the way of us becoming bridal and going into the secret place with our Lord and Saviour. So I'm going to kind of pick and choose in this one. Um, again, you can find this on the website under the Hebraic and Prophetic Teaching section here. Click on that. It looks like this. And it's down here, these two studies. So if you want to print out and read it rather than listening, um, that's for you. So um, interestingly, six years ago, just as an in introduction, um, when the Lord gave me this study, I had four good friends, all from different areas of life. One was actually a, a man from the Netherlands, actually. And we all had suddenly about the Lord bringing this issue of the secret place to us out of the blue over a, a two week period. They all started talking to me about it. And over the previous months, the Lord had been speaking to me and I've been writing notes about the secret place. So I knew it was time to get this up on the website back then. That was 2015. And my goodness, uh, how much more essential and a matter of spiritual survival is it for us? The immediacy, I can feel it. I can feel it right now. So uh, how do we get into the secret place and what exactly is it? And again, looking at Psalm 91 verse 1, that please go back and listen to part two first. I explore the Hebrew in that. Um, but I want to get to this section and it's things that stop us. Um, from entering the secret place. Sadly, in the modern and increasingly apostate church, the idea of secrecy has been coloured with a slightly negative connotation, even though the Lord talks about it so positively. And I believe the root cause of this is spiritual and falls into the following categories of sin, which break my heart to list. Obviously, I'm, I'm Jewish by ethnicity, and the Jewish people and even the Christians that love them um, throughout history have always understood the importance of um, knowing when to go into secret places, quite literally. Um, well, the Lord was telling me that it's definitely spiritual, that the modern church finds it so hard to go into the secret place. And this is, this is a list that I came to write after being shut away with him in his word and in prayer. It's a hard list, but I would say this is a mirror. You know, I want to hold these up to myself every day every day by the power of his Holy Spirit. The first one is obvious, pride. Pride seeks to make one's spiritual acts public, not secret. The illness of celebrity in the church is completely foreign to the biblical mind and heart, which by contrast, often seeks quiet, unglamorous and studious intimacy with his word or Torah. Celebrity by contrast is Hellenistic, not Hebraic. So you think of, when I say Hellenistic, I mean everything from the Roman times, um, the Babylonian spirit in entertainment and the Hellenistic worldview of having kind of the the stage, the performance, um, even in the church, uh, that's based on having a stage and everyone looks one direction. Whereas in the Hebraic, it's more like a, a circle. Uh, in synagogues, you have the beamer seat where you read from the Torah in the center, in most synagogues actually, and everyone's around it, uh, much like a yeshiva. Yeshiva is a Jewish study school as well. Where you study the word of God and you all talk and you all kind of cram in, much like a very um, talkative house group. Um, so the two models are based on two different kind of worldviews. And, uh, but pride is in our heart, whichever model we're in. Christianity as social entertainment rather than obedience to God's living word. So this is the second thing the Lord gave me that comes in the way of getting into the secret place. In the Jewish faith, the culmination of the biblical year and yearly readings from the Torah is a day called the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot. On this day, the Jewish people literally dance with the Torah scroll, which is the word of God. And this day is called Simchat Torah, the joy of the Torah. And there's a dance 
literally called the bridegroom of the Torah. Who is the living word of God and the bridegroom? Do we want to dance with him through obedience to his word as one dances with a treasured husband? Think of a bride and groom on their first dance at their wedding. Many may be watching, but it can only ever be a dance between two people at its core, like lost in their own world and love with each other. Do we want to be entertained like the modern church? Or do we want to follow the Lord in faithful, adoring, deeply intimate obedience, come what may? The third thing that stops us entering the secret place is human control. The spirit of control doesn't like it if people are meeting in secret. You think of um, countries where our brothers and sisters in Christ are deeply persecuted. They have to go underground. They have to go and meet in secret. But the spirit of human control doesn't like this because it loses knowledge of what's going on for and in the kingdom of God. Think of all the times in the Bible someone wisely hid their plans or knowledge from the Lord until the right time. And one of my favourites is Mary, uh, Miriam in Hebrew. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. That she was secret placing <laughs> in Luke 2, 19. I believe she needed to do that to make herself strong enough to see her own son in his humanity be killed for the sake of humanity. The fourth thing, false unity. Unity, at whatever cost, has sadly become a god in the modern church, not obedience to the word of God. Recently, this was six years ago, the Lord awoke me early in the morning and I could hear these words. The cry of the apostate church is unity. The cry of the bride is holiness. Obedience to the word of God, by definition, will cause disunity through God dividing the holy from the unholy. In the Jewish and Messianic faith, we even have a weekly ceremony for this holy separation at the end of Shabbat. It's called Havdalah, and it literally means separation. And while lighting the candle at the end of Shabbat and drinking the wine, which we do at the beginning of Shabbat as well, we state the biblical truth that God himself separates us as a holy people. And this is from Deuteronomy 7, 6, and then in the New Testament, uh, which is predominantly written by Jewish people, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 and in Matthew 22, Hebrews 10, Psalm 4. Um, the most well known is probably in Romans 1, 1 where Paul, a Jewish apostle to the early church, calls himself set apart, separating for the gospel of God. Anti-Semitism is another reason. The modern church can be very anti-Semitic, particularly in its subtle jealousy of the biblical and irrevocable covenant and blessings bestowed on the Jewish people. That's the Abrahamic covenant that is uh, unilateral. It was given to Abraham when he was asleep. And the church often confuses with the Sinai covenant, which is the one that's conditional based on their obedience of, to the word and then they're expelled from the land when they're not obedient. But the Abrahamic covenant is um, done when Abraham's asleep. It's a separate covenant and it's unconditional. So, the church, the apostate uh, anti-Semitic church, doesn't like it when the Jewish people are careful who they trust and will interpret this ungraciously rather than with tender love, understanding and protection. I think the Christian church understand this way more now. You know, my gosh, the modern bridal. We were so careful who we trust, we're so careful who we fellowship with. Um, remember, this is a list of all sin-based rationalities to dislike godly secrecy in the secret place. You know, the modern church is like, oh, why do they meet in secret? Um, you know, don't don't be pulled out of a secret place for that, dear bride. And if you're just becoming a bride and you're feeling a bit strange and you're wondering if people will think you're being unloving uh, in the world's concept of love, um, always base your concept of love on the word of God. And many times he calls us to be hidden, to be wise and to keep holy things to ourselves. Another one is the fear of man. If we fear rejection by others, we will not dare to act in any way which may risk being misinterpreted by others, such as pulling away from sinful behaviour. The Lord gave me these words when thinking about this point. That this is to replace God as our Lord with man as our God. This is to replace God as our Lord with man as our God. So don't do that. Let's not do that so we can get into the secret place. The next reason is love of self. It's closely connected to the above, but if we put our self as our God, 
We will again not want to be seen as being unnice by others. This one is a bone and marrow kind of, you know, conviction here. As this will damage our image of ourself within our own minds. Oh my goodness, the heart is so deceptive. Yet the word of God tells us again and again that people will not like the biblical truth of sin, repentance, hell, and the need of the Saviour being spoken about. Uh, John Wesley, I think, said, if you preach the gospel correctly, people will either get angry or they'll get saved. <laughs> How different is that to the modern fake gospel? However, the bride in the secret place, being careful who we trust and with whom we closely fellowship, um, that will, by definition, only upset those very people who, based on their behaviour or lack of sound judgment, should not at that time be trusted. This is all a model I can see. Oof why the Lord is giving me this now. It's because, you know, entering into the end times, the tribulation, etc. The bride and those left behind who then want to enter the secret place need to know to behave much like our brothers and sisters in Christ have been doing around other nations in the globe for, for centuries, for decades. And then another one is an imbalance between spirit and truth. Many modern churches overemphasize the supernatural, but do not follow the truth of his written word. This leads to damaging and grave deceptions, all in the twisting of the name of Yeshua or Jesus. Whereas he says in John 4.24, God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. In the modern church, the truth bit has gone missing a great deal of the time. It has been substituted for any one of the following because these are more popular and less offensive to the flesh than the word of God. Spirit and psychology, spirit and motivational leadership skills, spirit and music, spirit and worldly goodness, spirit and spiritual experience, spirit and social class acceptance, spirit and acceptance of sin. I feel like the Lord said someone who's listening to this is examining that against the fellowship they're taking part in and they're like, I think I need to go back to what the word says. It's the spirit and his truth only. This is either just religion, any of these, or modern kind of new age beliefs, actually, mixed with a dusting of the use of the name of Jesus. And so it is so, so spiritually dangerous. I implore us through the one Holy Spirit to get back deeply into living according to the word of God every day in the secret place. The Lord only lists one combination in spirit and in truth. And Yeshua Jesus couldn't have defined what truth is more clearly to us and his disciples in John 17, 17, where he says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. If we are separating ourselves from damaging unbiblical spirituality, we will be rejected by those who follow it, this unbiblical spirituality, because our separation will convict them of their fleshly ways. Don't be surprised if that happens to you. Keep pushing into the secret place. Keep following the, lo the Lord in his word and in his truth, in spirit and truth. All the above sin will stop us entering the secret place with the Lord. And don't let other people hold you back from entering the secret place. So if you see these sins in those closely around you, you need to switch camps. Because they all con contradict the word of God and his specific instructions to us through the Bible. Tragically, because of diluted biblical teaching, much modern Christianity in speech marks is far, far away from the purity that is forged through persecution. Therefore, being secret and careful is sometimes misinterpreted as being aloof and elitist. But to those Christians and Messianic Jews who've been through persecution and are about to go through persecution, that's an alert, it is instead seen as a loving protection of the body of Christ and self-sacrificial in that they are not thinking how being guarded will affect their social reputation. It is interesting to note that this is exactly how the Jewish people have often been misinterpreted. But the one new man of Jew and Christian together will suffer much of the same pain from both the world and the apostate church. So it is clear that the path into this treasured secret place is narrow and costly to our fleshly nature. Because in order to get into it, we must leave our flesh behind.